Today I'm going to show you my road bike tool kit, which is probably one of the more comprehensive and convenient kits you could put together. Now, as you'll see, as we go through this, this kit is probably overkill for the vast majority of rides. And really that's the way it should be. Um, if you find yourself having a flat tire every time you go out on the road or having like regular mechanical issues, that's a sign something is wrong. And you should take some time to learn the basics of bike mechanics and fix those problems. So the majority of the time when you go out for a ride, you have a smooth and trouble-free experience, okay? But no matter how hard you prepare and you know, take care of your bike, you'll occasionally just have unforeseen problems that you, know, you, can't, um, you can't stop in advance, right? You'll hit a pothole or just happen to run through some glass you didn't see. Something will happen and you'll need to take care of it on the road because otherwise you can take a short and simple and fun ride and turn it into a long and miserable pain in the ass, right? <laughs> like, Say you're going to the gym and it's a five mile ride out and a five mile ride back, you know, easy peasy, right? Nice warm up and recovery. But then on the way back, when you're like three miles out, you get a flat. Now you're stuck with the option of either like walking home 45 minutes or like calling for an Uber and then waiting for the Uber. And then you gotta go back home and get your car to get your bike and all, you know, just, just a mess. Just, you know, things that you can't necessarily prepare for, but they can be a pain in the ass, you know, if you can't fix them on the road. But at the same time, you need your, your prep to be convenient. Otherwise, you're going to waste more time being prepared than you would be if you just didn't even bother, <laughs> right? If you spend, uh, you know, 10 minutes every time you go out for a ride packing things up to get ready for the potential of something going wrong, you're going to waste more time preparing than you are if you just called the Uber that one occasional time you do have a problem out on a ride. So, you know, we need to not only be well prepared, but we need to make it easy to be well prepared. So I get everything packed up into one convenient on the bike and off the bike water bottle here. You know, as simple as it could possibly be. For comparison's sake, this is the stem bag I used to use. It's got uh, one strap here that goes around the headset, another one here that goes around the top tube. And you know, it's pretty nice. Uh, I think I paid 25 bucks for it on Amazon, so it wasn't heinously expensive. The build quality is good. The, uh, the volume is even slightly larger than the water bottle, and I can even fit my phone in this, which is one nice perk. The thing is, after using it for, I don't know, a couple months, it just got to be annoying. Because most of the time I go for a ride, I'm using it as transportation. You know, I'm going to the gym, or going to dinner, or going to some other event. And when I get there, I can't leave stuff strapped in my bike, otherwise someone's going to take it. And if I happen to forget this thing too, then it'll just be sitting there waiting for someone to come by and to snag it, and then I'm out all my gear as well. So the time you spend dealing with all the straps and stuff and the mental energy of remembering to take it with you when you park the bike and remembering to make sure it's on the bike before you leave the house, that all adds up and has made this, you know, not really worth the hassle. And then it came to the, the pump I carry too. If that pump came with one uh, bracket to mount on your bike. And again, you know, this is a, a nicely done bracket, but it's one more strap to deal with and since they only give you one bracket, if I'm like taking my crappier bike, I'm parking it somewhere that's, you know, a bit more of a risky area, I don't, you know, in case it gets stolen, I want my nice bike stolen. Then, you know, that's another thing to move from bike to bike and that time really adds up. And yeah, I'm just not gonna deal with that bullshit. <laughs> so having it all in one water bottle makes it about as easy as possible. And in fact, before I added the pump, you know, taped on here, this thing was also pretty nondescript. So if I happen to forget it on the bike or just didn't even bother taking it with me and just left it there, it's a water bottle, right? No, no one's gonna wanna take your water bottle because that's disgusting, right? Like you put your mouth in that stuff. No, no one's gonna wanna mess with it. Um, you know, not to say someone might, might check it and take it, but the odds of that are lower. So even in that regard, it's an improvement. Now with the pump on the side here, it does stick out a little bit more, you know, but, Overall, it's still a better solution for me, in my experience, than something like the stem bag would be. Okay, with that out of the way, let's dig in. Uh, most obviously is the hand pump here on the outside. And this one came from the Pro Bike Tool brand on Amazon. It's not exactly name brand. It's kind of one of the, the upper end Chinesium ones, I guess. But for the 40 bucks I paid, it's been a perfectly good pump. Uh, and I will say that when I uh, mention a specific product or brand here. 
I'm not necessarily endorsing that brand. You know, I don't have any affiliations with them, whatever. I, I paid my own money for the product. I'm just telling you what I bought and what my experience was. I do strongly encourage you to go and do your own research and pick something that fits your needs. Uh, and I also encourage you to buy somewhere other than Amazon if you can. You know, usually if I can find a comparable product in terms of price and quality in my local bike shop, I tend to go for that. Uh, my second choice is usually eBay. And then my last choice is Amazon. Just cause <sighs> monopolies are bad, you know, <laughs> and Amazon's kind of taking over the world. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> for the money I paid, it's been a good pump. The key thing to remember about hand pumps is that you carry these mostly to help other people. <laughs> you know, this is a heavier, bulkier, more expensive thing than a CO2 cartridge. The advantage it has is that you can use it in infinitely, right, over and over again. And in fact, a CO2 cartridge is like $2 if you buy online in bulk. So these things really won't even save you money in any reasonable amount of time, unless you're counting the other people you can help out with your bike pump. You know, I had a handful of flats last year. I fixed more other people's flats than my own. I guess, you know, just building up the, uh, the cycling karma, right? You see another rider out, if you can help him out, it's a good thing to do. But uh, anyway, on this pump, it does have some nice features that I like about it. For one, uh, it's got a tube you hook up to your tire, which means you have a bit more uh, room to work when you're pumping. And then it has uh, both Schrader and Presta ends if you swap that tube around. So it will fit either mountain bike or road tires. Now I will say it takes long enough to pump a road tire as it is and to hit that 100 PSI you're usually going for it gets pretty tough at the end. It does require, uh, you know, maybe 120 pumps or so on a typical 25 millimeter tire. So for mountain bike tire, just be prepared to be there for a while, but it will in theory work. And there's also a little uh, pressure gauge built in to this uh, tube. So you can see roughly where you are. Uh, I wouldn't count it as accurate, but it would give you a hint as to you know, roughly where you are on your pressure. So you have this guy mounted to the water bottle using duct tape, which is then, you know, convenient because you have duct tape in case you need duct tape. And uh, once you pull the bottle off, the duct tape's, you know, sticky enough. You can put it back on and it should stay in place. Uh, and if it, the duct tape doesn't want to adhere again, I do carry some zip ties in here to tie the bike or the pump to my bike frame, you know, as a, a backup plan, I guess. So going into the water bottle, you can see there really is enough space in here. You probably could carry a CO2 tank in one of those 16 gram ones if you wanted to. It's only good for one, one tire, you know, kind of one shot wonder, but you probably could fit it in here. And then next up at the top, I keep the things I use most often. And those are a multi-tool and my house key. <laughs> I use this one every time I ride. So it goes near the top of my kit. Then in this uh, multi-tool is a Crank Brothers M19, I think. It has pretty much every uh, bit you're gonna need in it. You know, all the hex bits, uh, Torx bits, uh, Phillips, you know, all that stuff. And it even has a spoke tool, a uh, little pair of small wrenches, and then a chain breaking tool on it. Um, I use this thing fairly regularly, you know. Again, it's not, not too often that you have mechanical problems, but when they happen, this saves a day in almost every circumstance. Uh, the couple of times where it doesn't, that's usually because this tool is very wide. So you can see if you have like, you know, your, uh, your five millimeter, you know, hex out, because this is a pretty common one. It's right there in the middle. And when you're turning a bolt, you might find this guy is either too long or too wide. And with your bike frame, it might not fit. So I have had a couple, one instance where this did not fit. Um, but for that reason, I actually carry a backup tool that we'll get to in a little bit. Apart from that uh, size thing, my only other complaint is really a little nitpick. We're here on the, the thread with this chain breaking tool. They didn't really time it right. So the thread bottoms out when the thing is turned 90 degrees. Had they paid closer attention, this would be where it bottoms out nice and tight so it doesn't wobble around too much here. But again, that's kind of a small OCD nitpick. Just if you're watching this video, Crank Brothers, do uh, 
see if you can fix that up because that would be that would be perfect anyway m19 it's uh been good enough for me working a bit further down i then got a plastic bag with a couple of handy things in it carry a dollar bill to act as a tire boot uh, now I've not had to use this yet, but I've been told by a few mountain biker friends that if you have a bad tire puncture, that a dollar bill will make for a pretty good, uh, patch on that. And then, you know, you get a new tube and you fix the flat. Um, but to keep the, uh, sp spare tube from just coming out of that gash in your tire, um, or getting popped again, a dollar bill will, uh, cover it nicely and be less prone to tearing than some, you know, something else like duct tape would. Um, now, I do carry a bill specifically for this because I usually don't carry cash when I'm out biking. You know, I'll have uh, maybe my ID and a credit card and like a public transit card in the water bottle here as those will fit through the brim of this bottle, but I'm usually not carrying cash. So a $1 bill takes care of that problem. And I've got a piece of string here, which you can use for uh, removing the quick link on your chain. There's a little trick for that where you, you wrap it around both parts of the quick link and then when you pull, it brings it together. So you squeeze it on the chink link, quick link with your fingers, give it a pull, it take, comes apart and you can move your chain. I've also got a set of gloves in here just because chains do get pretty nasty and you don't always want to get so dirty. Let's see, and I've got uh, a little sample bottle of cologne <laughs> Because like I said, I do often, you know, bike to something where people expect me to not smell like ass. So you take the last mile of your ride, you know, kind of easy, let yourself, you know, dry off, air out, all that jazz. And when you're maybe two or three blocks away, you know, out of sight, you stop, give yourself a spritz or two, just take the edge off, and then you ride in to where your friends are. <laughs> just, you know, trying to be polite, right? And then I've got uh, two pairs of master links, both a nine speed and 10 speed for the bikes I ride. Then I've got a uh, press to the Schrader adapter, and this will let you use a uh, gas station air pump on a road bike tire. So it'll turn your Presta valve into a Schrader valve. Uh, honestly, now that I carry the bike pump here, I probably don't need this adapter anymore. But again, you know, it's, like two grams and it costs like 10 cents on eBay. So cheap insurance, I just leave it in the bag. Why not? Then I've got a Presta cap here with the top cut off. If you've watched the uh, video I put out earlier this week on how to pack a road bike tire, uh, you'll see this is for deflating the uh, tire. So when you get a flat, you wanna put your spare in, you still wanna pack out the flat tire so you can patch it and reuse it later on and this will help you repack it that way. Let's see, the plastic bag itself also can be useful in some cases. And then everything else beneath this kind of just falls out. But all the things you access frequently are on the top where they're easy to get to. It's all a shake. There we go. Okay, and that's it all. So, a few zip ties, because zip ties, right? <laughs> Got uh, two USB cables. One of them is USB-C, that's for my phone. The other is USB micro B. Uh, that's what I use for uh, my headlamp. You know, typical, the old Android style plug. Uh, I don't carry a USB charger for those. Uh, you could, in theory, fit one in here as well if you didn't carry that CO2 tank. Um, I did carry a USB charger for a long time, and then I found myself literally never using it. You know, occasionally I'll be at a friend's house and want to charge my phone, in which case having one of these guys is helpful. But as for carrying the USB charger, I haven't ever needed that, so I just stopped bothering. I will say with the cables too, if you can get one of the, uh, you know, rubberized cables, these things are far more durable and will last better in a bag like this than, uh, than the, the thin cables would. Let's see. Then we've got a uh, spare tube. Again, I put out a video a few days ago on how to pack a tube this small. It's a typical uh, 700C, 25 millimeter tire spare. 
And I've got a patch kit, just a couple of adhesive uh, patches and a piece of sandpaper in there, which are both for me if I have a very unlucky day and get a flat on a flat, or if I'm passing another writer who has a flat, then with the patches here, I can more easily help them out. Then tire levers, these are, you know, again, for the occasional flat. I do carry two, though I guess you could get away with just one if you didn't want to, you know, carry the other, I don't know, 24 grams or whatever one of these things weighs. And then lastly, we get to the other tool that I use in place of the uh, Crank Brothers sometimes. So I keep it wrapped up in a shop rag, which is handy just to have, you know, a rag. And then this is a mini ratchet dr uh, driver. So turn it either way, it's like a little wrench. Rather than taking sockets, it uses uh, the quarter inch hex bits. And I carry an assortment of bits that covers basically all the same stuff as the crank for this tool, but it does it in a slightly more compact form factor. And also the ratcheting can be kind of nice. Um, doesn't have the spoke tool or the chain breaker, so I do carry both of them. Um, but this has proven handy at least the one time. <laughs> you know, that, that's why I carry it. You know, it's a couple grams. Uh, you get these guys from Harbor Freight for about three bucks. So it's really hard to argue with something that cheap. Um, and in fact, if you did want to really, you know, cut costs, I would probably go with one of these versus one of these. <coughs> Excuse me. Because this crank for this tool is more like 25 or 30 bucks. So this has almost all the same functionality as this. And it's pretty compact still. Let's see, uh, and I will uh, point out as another alternative to this, you know, because this is a Harbor Freight tool, it is pretty cheap. You can strip out these ratchets here, um, and maybe it's still more weight than something you want to carry. Another alternative to this is simply get yourself a quarter inch um, Allen key, okay, and then you can cut it short if you want, and you file a pair of opposing points on your Allen key. Just gently knock it a few times with the file, and then that way you can take a quarter inch drive, quarter inch hex socket, and then that will fit on your Allen key with the fitment depending on how well you filed it. One second, I know this fits somehow. There we go, like that. And then with this, you can use this as a, uh, a driver for hex bits. So if you either you know, don't have a Harbor Freight near you to buy one of these, or you don't feel like going to Harbor Freight because most of the tools they sell are trash, then another option is to get yourself a quarter inch hex bit and then turn that into a small hex driving wrench. And you can use it both in the torquey way and then also in the fast spinning way like this. So it's kind of a nice hack. It is a hack. It's still kind of, you know, kludgy, but this is also pretty kludgy. The uh, one downside to using a hex socket like this, it doesn't really have a good way to retain the hex bit. So for example, this little extension here has a magnet in it that will hold the hex bit very nicely, whereas this socket does not. So turn it the wrong way, it just falls out. If you can find a way to magnetize your socket or find one maybe that has a, a bit tighter fit, I would say uh, go ahead and, and try to do that. But I think, with all that, you should be pretty well covered for almost any anything you encounter on the road. You know, like we're not carrying a spare chain or spare uh, spokes or spare housing and cables and stuff, the things you'd want to carry if you go on a full like thousand mile bike tour. But for anything you're gonna do in a one day ride, this should probably have you covered. Anyway, that's all, hope it helps, and thanks for watching.